Well, hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to solve this beam problem by using the technique of symmetry. In one of my previous videos, I solved this with the usual stiffness method by considering two elements. And I'm going to show you how you can shorten this problem by just looking or just using the symmetry technique. The file I've opened is the beam template that arrived, which just computes the element matrix for me and in the other tab of the document I have done the usual stiffness method approach for this problem. So firstly I have uploaded a video describing the symmetry theory and when you can use symmetry and when not and what you should do in your symmetry plane and so forth. Now, okay so let's get started. Firstly you will be able to see where the symmetry is in this problem if I can draw a straight line try that is straight enough so that should be your symmetry plane and you can see that 12 Newton force as well as spring is in the plane of symmetry ok so firstly I want to compute the element matrix and also you see the section properties and the length are the same for both elements which means I can use symmetry so I'm just going to consider node 1 to 2 with the symmetry plane as shown I can just compute the element matrix and that is going to be the same as this you can see these ROMs are already entered the 70 gigapascal q times 10 to the minus 4 inertia and the l of 4 meters and I always like to number my degrees of freedom or label my degrees of freedom in my in the matrix so I know which values correspond to which degree of freedom so I'm going to type d1 by 1 d2 by 2 and because the matrix is symmetrical you just move that up copy firstly give it a green color copy paste the transpose now that labeled and this matrix is just going to be copied paste there values now I have my element matrix for that element I'm considering Next, I want to assemble my global matrix. Now, this can be done manually because it's a small matrix, but I like to stay consistent using my technique for the assembling the global stiffness matrix. You are welcome to do this by hand if you want to, but yeah, it's your personal preference. So, I would like to label my unknown degrees of freedom first. And the only unknown degree of freedom in the symmetry problem is going to be the vertical displacement at node 2 as well as my rotation at node 1. That should be correct. Yes. My rotation at node 1 is unknown as well as my vertical displacement. The rotation at node 2 is fixed due to the plane of symmetry. That should be clear to you, if not, see my explanation in your video about the theory of the symmetry, of the symmetry technique but yeah, basically how it works is when you take a plane of symmetry you add displacement perpendicular to it must be zero as well as, as the rotation around that plane which means the rotation at node 2 must be zero so our unknown rotations our unknown displacements will be V2 and Phi1 and our known displacements is V1 and Phi2 Color it in Copy Paste the transpose of that and again do the equals if error method we look up that value 
that array column index match the value array that is zero false and that's my we look up and if it's an error it should be zero so I'm going quite fast in this statement but you sh should be able to understand how it works if you don't some of my other videos I explain it a bit better but it's quite straightforward it's just the VLOOKUP for the uh, degree of freedom or the label on the right and the match function to determine the column index of the top label but yeah this is also explained in one of my previous videos and you'll see that we'll always stay in column D so the dollar sign there always row 46 dollar sign and that array that we fix is a four, 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 four. And now that's completed for that part of my matrix. And then drag that out, drag it down. And again, as in my previous example, we have the spring which is acting in the vertical direction at node two. Now this spring is also in the plane of symmetry, so the step is going to be half. So the displacement at node two on the angle of my global matrix will be added by a hundred thousand meters. Okay. So now moving on, as in my previous video or all my other examples, the general equation is my force vector equal to my stiffness matrix times my displacement vector and to put that in matrix form I type matrix equation and that is going to be equal sign. I'm going to copy my global matrix from there. Just take the paste links so I know it's coming from there. So I just paste picture. I don't want to paste picture. Paste links. That makes more sense. In the color my labels, so I know which is labels and which is values. Put my multiplication sign in. Okay, so now for my force vector. The only node I have an applied force is the is a node two which has a vertical external loading of twelve kilonewtons. Because that loading is in the plane of symmetry, that loading will be divided by two. So I will have a down force of six kilonewtons working at node two which corresponds to the vertical expression of node 2, so I'm going to put minus 6,000 newtons, minus 6,000 newtons. And the minus is because it's in the downwards direction, and in the derivation, you will see positive is upwards. Okay. Then my rotation at 1, the applied loading there, you can see there's no moment, so I'm going to put 0, and in my Vertical reaction at 1, or vertical reaction at 1, I'm going to have a reaction, so I'm going to put vertical reaction at node 1, and the rotation node 2 will be an internal moment at node 2. Because phi 2, the rotation at node 2 will correspond To the internal moment at node 2. Okay, moving on, 
I'm going to copy this, paste it there. Values, uh, could start for my displacement vector. Now I want to put some values in this vector, otherwise, I can't do it. So it will solve the problem. So you'll see the vertical action node 1 will be 0. And using the plane of symmetry, the rotation degree of freedom at node 2 will be constrained. So that'll be y2 will be 0. So we move that down. And v1 will also be 0. That should be clear, but just a quick explain, a re recap. Phi 2 is 0 because of the plane of symmetry moving through node 2. And when you take a plane of symmetry, the displacement perpendicular to the plane will be 0, as well as the rotation around the plane of symmetry will be 0. That's why the rotation that the at node 2 is 0 for this problem because we are ignoring that part of the element or of the problem. Okay, so now I have a matrix equation. Now we want to solve our displacements and copy that. Like that. These are displacements equals equals sign. I'm going to do a much nice multiplication, but firstly I'm going to color code my matrix. I'm going to make that pink, make that this color, make that green, and make that neutral. Okay, so this is basically the subdividing our matrix equation because that'll that'll be one equation, that'll be the second equation. And because this is due to using that equation to solve the unknown displacements and then using those determined displacements to solve the unknown reactions or internal moment in this case in this equation. Okay, so let's solve our unknown displacements that equals matrix multiplication. We multiply the inverse of the green part of the matrix, the global matrix with that vector control so enter we get values there it'll be meters it'll be in radians equals that multiply by thousand get our values in millimeters and then to get our get our reactions or forces is a better answer that is obtained by that the selecting that basically equals matrix multiplication of the bottom part of my global matrix with my newly determined placements. We control shift the enter and we get reactions. To the moment so that vertical reaction that one will be so much newton, will be newton meters equals thousand. So that's, that'll be our internal moment at node 2. This is not really, really significant to the problem. But it's nice to get an on, or it's an answer you can get from that as well. Okay, so from this um, solution, I obtained the vertical reaction at node 1 will be 5.2 kilonewtons. And from symmetry, the vertical reaction at node 3 will be the same as that. And corresponding with my other example, my vertical action node 3 is indeed 5.2. And you can see my answers as well as my displacements correlate with the 
example I did without using symmetry. So this should be very clear. If it's not, please don't be afraid to ask a question in the comment section. I will respond to you. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please please press that like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Thank you.